about uh, bacterial pneumonia. Right? The PPT slide is also visible, I hope. Arvachi is my PowerPoint visible. Okay, thank you. Sheetal is saying, please start. Uh, so bacterial pneumonia one, this is the first lecture, which was supposed to happen in eight to nine session. But because of some problem, we are taking it now at 12 to one. And the second part of bacterial pneumonia two that we will be taking from two to three. And these bacterial pneumonia uh, does not include pneumonia caused by mycobacterium, which is also a bacteria, but that is a different kind of disease, a granulomatous disease, and that we uh, discuss separately. What is pneumonia? Pneumonia is infection of pulmonary parenchyma. And what happens, there is proliferation of microbial pathogen in lower respiratory tract, lower respiratory tract, the small bronchioles and alveoli. And that results into the inflammation of pulmonary parenchyma. So uh, why does this happen? Why does pneumonia happen? Uh, in fact, one should ask, why does pneumonia not happen? I mean, respiratory tract is the place which is always in communication with uh, external environment. Right from our birth till we die, we are constantly in communication with the external air that is all, all the time coming in, coming out. So it is perhaps the most exposed place. And one should be very susceptible to pneumonia. But despite of that, a pneumonia it does not occur very often. All right. So uh, there are certain reasons. There is a defense mechanism uh, of our respiratory tract. First of all, there are barriers in upper respiratory tract like hairs and turbinate in the nares. And uh, the branching of branching architecture of the uh, uh, bronchioles is also a mechanism, a barrier, because most air, dust, or other particles they get trapped into the branches. Had it been a straight uh, path, uh, the chances of infection would have been much more. And the mucociliary clearance, the epithelium of the bronchioles is uh, mucociliary type. There are certain cells, globulate cells, they secrete mucus. And the ciliary epithelial cells, they are in constant motion. The ciliary movement, the cilia of these cells are in constant, mo constant motion and propelling this, uh, uh, this gel layer, this mucus, uh, which also traps the particles, including bacteria, from uh, downward to upward direction. And this uh, thrust out all the pathogens. And it has also some local antibacterial factors. And besides this, gag reflex and cuff reflex is also a barrier for uh, that prevents particles to enter into our lower respiratory tract. And the very important contributing factor is normal flora, normal flora. Our respiratory tract, uh, particularly the upper respiratory tract, has a normal resident flora. And this normal resident flora does not allow pathogen to colonize here in the epithelial lining of the respiratory tract. And this normal flora is non-pathogenic, but because this non-pathogenic flora uh, uh, does not allow the pathogens to grow. So it has also a protective action. If because of any uh, intervention, if this uh, normal flora is disrupted, then a person becomes more prone to infection. Alveolar space has macrophages. If despite of all these barriers, 
and defense mechanism if a pathogen reaches to the alveolar sac the macrophages will engulf that uh, pathogen and they also release uh, uh, protein uh, alveolar cell secretes protein protein a protein d and it has uh, opsonization action and antibiotic action despite of this infection occurs if there is loss or suppression of cuff reflex in coma anesthesia or neuromuscular disorder or drugs or if there is injury to mucociliary apparatus it can be because of cigarette smoke inhalation of hot or corrosive gas gases viral disease genetic disturbances uh, like immotile celia syndrome which is a genetic disorder or interference with phagocytic or bactericidal action of alveolar macrophages that is uh, because of alcohol tobacco smoke anoxia or oxygen intoxication pulmonary congestion or edema accumulation of secretion in conditions such as cystic fibrosis bronchial obstruction aspiration during sleep or uh, less uh, loss of consciousness and rarely rarely infection can also occur not from the environment not from the uh, uh, respiratory tract but from a hematogenous spread suppose patient is septicemic or there is some organism in his blood coming from a different organ and rarely it can cause pneumonia it is not a common cause of pneumonia but it can cause pneumonia and another rare cause is contiguous extension from the infected pleural or mediastinal space uh, if pleura is infected or some mediastinal organ are infected so from there from a direct contact contiguous extension the infection can reach to the lungs so these are some mechanism by which uh, the lungs are protected and some mechanism by which we can get infection of lungs so uh, if normally some bacteria they do reaches to the alveolus despite of all these uh, defense mechanism but there are alveolar macrophages they do not they uh, rapidly engulf these organisms and prevent us from having an infection or pneumonia but sometimes when the infection or the dose of this uh, pathogen is so high that the capacity of macrophages is overwhelmed so the macrophages what they do they call for help they initiate a inflammatory response and they secrete interleukin 1 tumor necrosis factor and this inter these inflammatory mediators like interleukin 1 tumor necrosis factor they induce fever and some chemokines il8 granulocyte colony stimulating factor they they stimulate the release of neutrophils neutrophils so neutrophils come and they not only come in alveoli there is also a peripheral leukocytosis and there is increased prolonged secretion into the alveolar space and because of this inflammatory mediators and neutrophils the alveolar there is alveolar capillary leak and this leak is so much that not only neutrophils come into the alveolar space erythrocyte also come into the alveolar space so initially there is there can be hemoptysis but after when too much too many cells come into the alveolar space there is consolidation of the alveoli alveoli and and uh you will listen rails detectable on auscultation and hypoxemia because of alveolar filling so these macrophages will release will initiate inflammatory response il1 uh these macrophages inflammatory protein 1 alpha 1 beta and they help in the inflammatory reaction by uh, inducing fever by capillary increasing capillary permeability and by uh recruiting macrophage or sorry neutrophils and monocytes and so what happens so this is a normal alveoli and when the pathogen comes and because of this response there is congestion uh, edema inside the alveoli and when capillary leak is high uh, this uh, not only neutrophil and macrophages come into the alveoli uh, rbc is also come 
and in this stage this is just one alveolus and the whole uh, lung that part of lung which in which is involved in this infection will become consolidated and because of rbc's it appears red so this stage is called red hepatization the spongy nature of lung is lost and it appears red just like liver so we call it red hepatization and after some time when rbc's are uh, lysed or some rbc's goes back to the circulation only wbc's are remains and then we call it gray hepatization and after that the uh, when these wbc's starts going back to the circulation and this fluid also uh, goes back then this that next stage is resolution when the alveoli is coming back to its normal position normal situation so first is congestion red hepatization gray hepatization and resolution so this is uh, a normal typical bacterial lower pneumonia typical bacterial lower pneumonia typical uh, we are saying it because there is something another you know, there is something called atypical also there so we are going to discuss that uh, typical means in which there is consolidation there is uh, production of cough uh, productive cough consolidation that is called typical pneumonia so this pneumonia is called typical pneumonia in which there is consolidation a lobe is involved and there is a production of cough and if you culture that cough you can find the organisms and after some time it resolves uh, in resolution so this is lower pneumonia typical bacterial lower pneumonia there is another type of pneumonia which is called bronco pneumonia bronco pneumonia the difference between lower pneumonia and bronco pneumonia is purely anatomical anatomical uh, it is not a microbiological difference it is only a anatomical difference if the whole lobe is involved then we call it lower pneumonia and if the foci of infections are uh, not or so that a whole lobe is not involved and some lobules are involved then we call it bronco pneumonia or lobular pneumonia that is an anatomical difference uh, right uh, this is lobar pneumonia and this is bronchial bronchial pneumonia bronchial pneumonia and it only it depends on where the nodus of infection is if it is high then it will result into a lobar pneumonia and if small bronchioles are involved uh, then it will result into a bronco pneumonia bronco pneumonia there another class there is another classification that is typical or atypical pneumonia about which we were talking typical is caused by the uh, extracellular organisms the common extracellular organisms like pneumococcus uh, klebsiella haemophilus influenzae etc in this there is involvement of parenchyma and alveoli the consolidation and in atypical pneumonia because the organisms are mainly intracellular the infection does not occur inside the alveoli but it occurs in the interstitial space the interstitial space between the alveoli or the wall of the alveoli why because the organisms they are mostly intracellular organisms so in typical pneumonia you will see consolidation in atypical pneumonia you won't see consolidation consolidation and uh, because alveoli are involved in typical pneumonia so there will be production of cough uh, cough sputum and you can culture the organism from that cough and in atypical pneumonia because infection is not in the alveolar space it is in the wall of the alveoli so there will not be productive cough productive cough right and as i said typical pneumonia is caused by mainly extracellular organisms and atypical pneumonia is mainly caused by intracellular organisms intracellular organism can someone give some examples of intracellular organisms uh like viruses they are intracellular right uh tb is intracellular yes you are right 
but here we are not discussing TB and we won't uh, give TB as an example of atypical pneumonia, no. Uh, it is a is intracellular organism. It, do, it replicates inside the macrophages, but that is not a uh, example of atypical pneumonia. Atypical pneumonia causing organisms are like uh, Clamidia, like, uh, Rick like uh, Coxella, Rickettsia, Mycoplasma, and most viral infections, they are they they cause atypical pneumonia. The next lecture is about atypical pneumonia. There we will talk about them. Uh, here only for the sake of comparison, I am talking about uh, atypical pneumonia, right? And culture will be negative in atypical pneumonia. It will be positive in typical pneumonia. Uh, one reason is. They are intracellular organisms, so culture can be negative because of that. But more than that, the reason for culture being negative, the organisms are mostly non-culturable or they require a special medium. For example, if you are culturing the specimen, uh, sputum specimen for a usual, you are looking for usual pneumococcus and you will use blood agar or chocolate agar, your viral pathogen won't grow on that. Uh, mycoplasma won't grow on that, Clamidia won't grow on that, even if they are present in the specimen, right? So a typical or atypical pneumonia, this difference is mainly microbiological and they have a different pathology. In this alveolar spaces involved, in this alveolar wall or interstitial spaces involved and they are caused by different organisms. And when we said bronchopneumonia and lobar pneumonia, that is an anatomical differentiation. Anatomical differentiation. Is that right? There is another differentiation of uh, pneumonia that is called uh, um, community acquired pneumonia. One is called community acquired pneumonia, and other is called hospital acquired pneumonia. In broad terms, uh, this is community acquired pneumonia, the other is called hospital acquired pneumonia this is primarily an epidemiological difference from where you are acquiring the infection whether you are acquiring it from the community or you are acquiring it from the hospital if you are acquiring in the community it means it was your resident flora uh, which has got inside the lung and it has caused pneumonia because of some exacerbating factors and community acquired pneumonia are caused by usual pathogen like uh, pneumococcus, hemophilus, morexella, et cetera. And usually they are uh, susceptible to antibiotics. But hospital acquired pneumonia is caused by different pathogens, uh, GNRs, gram negative bacteria, and they are resistant to bacteria, sometimes uh, multi drug resistant, sometimes. Uh, one more thing is uh, community acquired pneumonia is usually most of the time lower pneumonia and hospital acquired pneumonia is most of the time bronco pneumonia bronco pneumonia right uh, so we have now we have three uh, type of um, uh, differentiations one is community acquired hospital acquired the typical atypical and uh, other one was bronchopneumonia and lower pneumonia. Bronchopneumonia and lower pneumonia is anatomical differentiation. Uh, typical atypical is microbiological and pathological differentiation. And this one is epidemiological. There is difference in the microbiology also, difference in the anatomical pattern also. But And one more thing I would like to say, uh, uh, these terms are, I mean, and the opposite of typical pneumonia is atypical pneumonia. It will, it won't be uh, bronchopneumonia, right? Bronchopneumonia, I mean, typical pneumonia can be both of that, low, lower pneumonia as well as bronchopneumonia, right? So these terms should be kept, uh, should be used uh, with uh, applying some mind. And uh, atypical pneumonia is sometimes called interstitial pneumonia in some books. And also on internet, you can find it uh, uh, as synonymous with interstitial pneumonia. Although the main pathology of atypical pneumonia is the infection of interstitial space, despite of that, uh, the standard books 
refrain from using the term interstitial pneumonia for atypical pneumonia. Uh, for them, interstitial pneumonia is entirely a different pathology. Uh, sometimes, most of the time, non-infectious. So atypical pneumonia, although it is involving interstitial space, uh, it is not always interstitial pneumonia, right? So interstitial pneumonia is a different pathology. So coming back to the microbiology, uh, what are the common causes, microbiological causes? Community acquired pneumonia is caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, Moraxella catarrhalis, Legionella pneumophila, uh, Anthrobacteriaceae. Legionella pneumophila is at some places it is given in, uh, uh, mm, I should say, typical pneumonia, and most of the time it is discussed as atypical pneumonia, but it is community acquired. That is definitely true. Community acquired atypical pneumonia caused by mycoplasma. Chlamydo, Chlamydia, Coxella bruneti, viruses, uh, RSV, parainfluenza virus, influenza A, B, adenovirus, and SARS virus. SARS, uh, which means which includes SARS-2 also, and MERS also. Uh, the viruses we are going to discuss in a separate lecture. Uh, nosocomial pneumonia, which means hospital-acquired pneumonia or healthcare-associated pneumonia. It is mainly caused by gram-negative organism, Enterobacteriaceae, uh, Pseudomonas, Acinetobacter, and also our usual community acquired pneumonia causes. They can also be involved in nosocomial pneumonia. Nosocomial means hospital acquired. Aspirational pneumonia if a person is aspirating fluid, uh, he is unconscious, then pneumonia can also be caused by anaerobic oral flora, which includes bacteroids, Prevotella, Fusobacterium, Papristreptococcus, and mixed with. The infection can be mixed with the aerobic causes. Chronic pneumonia is caused by nocardia, actinomyces, or granulomatous pneumonia is caused by tuberculosis, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, non tubercular mycobacterium, histoplasma capsulatum, coccidoides imidis, blastomyces dermatitis. Necrotizing pneumonia is caused by anaerobic bacteria, Staphylococcus, Klebsiella, Streptococcus pyogenes. And in immunocompromised hosts, pneumonia can be caused by cytomegalovirus, pneumocystis cranii, mycobacterium avium intracellular, intracellulary, invasive aspergillosis, invasive candidiosis, and the usual pathogens, our bacterial, viral, and fungal organisms. Uh, immunocompromised means a person either uh, AIDS patient or uh, transplant recipient person or anyone who is taking a, a immunosuppressive therapy. Now coming to the pathogen, the one is uh, pneumococcus. Pneumococcus, its formal name is Streptococcus pneumoniae. Streptococcus pneumoniae. Pneumococcus is uh, most used name, the informal name. Uh, most books uses this name, but the formal name is Streptococcus pneumoniae. Pneumonia. Although the most commonly used name, even in the books, is pneumococcus, because it is related to Streptococcus, and it shares common somatic, somatic antigen, cell wall antigen with the Streptococcus. Formerly, it was called Diplococcus pneumoniae. Diplococcus pneumoniae, because it is found in pairs and it is a normal commensal of respiratory tract. It is a gram positive, lanceolate in shape, capsulated, and in old culture, capsule may be lost, uh, non-motile, non-sporing, right? Gram positive, capsulated, lanceolate in shape. Lanceolate shape uh, comes with a pair of the pneumococcus. Uh, single pneumococcus is, I mean, two pneumococcus when they are arranged in pair with a common capsule, then this shape of lanceolate come, lance-like shape, when pneumococcus is in pair. pair right? Uh, they are aerobic and facultative anaerobic, just like streptococci. The grow, growth is improved by 5 to 10% CO2. Colonies on blood agar are raised circular 1 mm in diameter and surrounded by a zone of 
alpha hemolysis alpha hemolysis that we discussed in last lecture it is a greenish discoloration surrounding the colony that is alpha hemolysis the older culture after prolonged in, in incubation there is a phenomena called autolysis autolysis in pneumococcus uh, the uh, autolysis because of autolysis there is a central depression which creates a typical draughtsman appearance draughtsman appearance uh, there is found smooth or rough variation of the capsular stains they give smooth colonies smooth colonies and the rough strains they give uh, stains they give rough colonies it has a great significance in terms of pathogenicity also and that we will talk uh, so this is a colony on blood agar and you will see surrounding the colony there is a zone of alpha hemolysis hemolysis in in case of beta hemolysis that is found in staphylococcus and streptococcus you will see a clear zone clear transparent zone but here the zone is not clear it is green colored discoloration of hemoglo hemoglobin and this is called alpha hemolysis alpha hemolysis is seen not only in pneumococcus but also in some of the streptococci uh, streptococci that uh, we will talk uh, this is the old colony of pneumococcus and because of autolysis there is depression in the center and elevation at the periphery and because of that it gives appearance of a carom coin carom coin these are carom coins the colonies they look like carom coin or drought man or carom coin colonies because of autolysis uh, i was saying that alpha hemolysis is seen in some streptococci also they are called very dense streptococci so we need to differentiate between pneumococcus and very dense streptococci because both of them are alpha hemolytic both of them will give alpha hemolytic colonies on blood agar so differences are one is in the morph morphology pneumococcus is uh, capsulated lanceolate shaped diplococci they are non capsulated oval round cell on blood agar colonies are raised circular and later they become draughtsman type in very dense streptococci the colonies are dome shaped bile solubility is seen in pneumococci it is not seen in very dense group optochin sensitivity is seen in pneumococcus it is not seen in very dense group inulin fermentation is seen in pneumococcus it is not seen in very dense group and animal pathogenicity is seen in pneumococcus not in very dense group even in pneumococcus the animal pathogenicity you will see only with the pathogenic strain not all strain of pneumococcus so these are the differences by which we differentiate from pneumococcus from very dense group streptococcus and all these tests are done for the laboratory diagnosis of pneumococcus also laboratory confirmation of pneumococcus biochemical reaction on pneumococcus ferment many sugars and this fermentation reaction is done on his serum broth and they are catalase and oxidase negative bile solubility and autolysis bile solubility and autolysis is because of one enzyme that is n acetyl muramyl al alanine amidase in short we call that autolysin and it is produced by a pneumococcus and what it does it uh, breaks the peptidoglycan and because of that there is lysis of some cells and this autolysis is responsible responsible both for bile solubility as well as for the typical colony appearance that is carom coin colony appearance okay sensitivity to optochin we take a disc uh, imp impregnated with optochin uh, we in concentration of 1 is to 5 lakh uh, and there is a zone of uh, inhibition if it is pneumococcus antigenic structure which is very important in uh, 
uh, pneumococcus. There is a capsular polysaccharide, uh, which is most important antigen of pneumococcus, and it is type specific, type specific, immunologically distinct for each 90 serotypes. There are uh, around 90 serotypes of pneumococcus, uh, and they all have a distinct capsular polysaccharide antigen. And on the basis of that capsular polysaccharide antigen, these serotypes are divided. And it is also immunogenic. It elicits B cell response, antibody production. And it is diffusible. It diffuses into the culture, into culture media. And it is also used for the typing of the bacteria. Uh, serological typing is performed for epidemiological studies. The type 1 to 12, they cause infection in adults. Type 6, 14, 19, 23 cause infection in children. Type 1, 3, 7, 8, and 12 are invasive type and liable to cause serious infections. So uh, these are important. Uh, epidemiologically, these serotypes are important for the production of vaccines. Right. How do we do the serotyping by three methods? One is agglutination, precipitation, coiling reaction. Agglutination is uh, by simple agglutination, by the latex agglutination kit. Coiling reaction is uh, we take a culture, a liquid culture, and we add antisera into that culture. So what will happen? Because antibodies, if the antibodies are against that serotype, um, Antibodies will bind to the bacteria and this capsule become swollen. Uh, this is the bacteria surrounding. There is a capsule. If the antibodies which are present in antisera, they are uh, specific to that type, they will bind to the surface and it will become, the capsule will become swollen and it appears as a swollen capsule. And this reaction is called quallung reaction. Quallung reaction. It is done uh, not only for the uh, detection of the pneumococcus, but also for the typing of pneumococcus, pneumococcus. And this pneumococcus capsule is very important uh, virulence factors because the encapsulated strains are pathogenic and non-capsulated strains are non-pathogenic, non-pathogenic. Uh, we can also do animal pathogenicity test. It was performed, it used to be performed in older days. Uh, we inject the pneumococci in mice or rabbit interperitoneally, and the animal dies in three days if the, and we detect the organism in the peritoneal fluid. This is done for, uh, not only for the diagnosis, but also for the pathogenicity of the organism. There are certain other antigens. One is somatic C antigen. Somatic C antigen, uh, it is an uh, antigen. And what it does, it binds to C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein is a protein which is secreted by uh, liver. Uh, and it is it binds, it precipitates with the C, C antigen. So C antigen plus C-reactive protein they give a precipitation reaction, precipitation reaction. So this C-reactive protein, the name C-reactive has come from the C antigen, pneumococcal C antigen. Although the C-reactive protein, it is not an antibody. Uh, it is not specific to pneumococcus and the rise in serum is not specific to pneumonia or pneumococcal infection. It is it rises non-specifically in all type of infections, but because it precipitates the C antigen, the name has derived from this C antigen, the C reactive protein or CRP. It is a very common uh, test which is performed for detection for of infections. A non-specific test for infection is CRP, and the CRP is one that precipitates the C antigen. Other proteins are M protein. Similar to the streptococcal M protein, pneumolysin. It is a toxin, uh, but the role of pneumolysin toxin in causing pneumonia is not very much. It is a weak kind of toxin, just like a step like that. Other uh, virulence factors are IgA protease. It is an enzyme, protease enzyme, which lies the IgA 
antibody antibody it breaks the IgA molecule of antibody which is a predominant antibodies in the respiratory tract protein adhesion colonization is mediated by protein adhesion cell wall constituents dicoic acid peptidoglycan they also participate in the virulence factors bacterial variation is smooth to rough variation uh, when a pathogen loses its antigenicity or production of a capsule the colonies become rough this variation is called smooth to rough when a pathogenic strain is converted into a non pathogenic strain by losing some genes which were producing the capsular polysaccharide then it becomes smooth to rough variation Uh, clinical syndrome pneumococcus is not a stick parasite. It is also found uh, as a normal resident flora of upper respiratory tract in carriers, 5 to 70 percent of the population. Infections caused by pneumococcus are pneumonia, otitis media, sinusitis, meningitis, septicemia. These are important infections. Predisposing factors a viral infection or damage into the respiratory epithelial cells or impaired immune response or loss of splenic function. So uh, loss of splenic function, if, if a person has undergone a spleen surgery or splenectomy, he becomes predisposed to pneumococcal infection. Uh, pneumonia is mainly lobar pneumonia or bronchopneumonia. It is a very important uh, disease. Uh, every year, 5 million deaths, out of them, half of these deaths, under five uh, uh, deaths are because of pneumonia. Pneumonia. 98% of the children who die of pneumonia are in developing countries. Symptoms are cough, uh, productive cough, rust-colored mucus, fever and chills, shortness of breath, chest pain, fatigue. Other infections caused by pneumococcus are meningitis, Bacteremia, empyema, pericarditis, otitis media, sinusitis, conjunctivitis, peritonitis. Now coming to the diagnosis, uh, chest x-ray, blood test, sputum culture, physical examination, CT scan, chest x-ray, you will see consolidation, lung involvement in blood test, you will see uh, CRP, the CRP, and sputum culture, you can find the organism that is causing the disease. On physical examination, you can also look for the consolidation in the lung. Uh, this is in chest x-ray, this area is the consolidated lung. This. So um, for other infection, uh, for uh, respiratory infection, you will collect sputum. Uh, serum coated laryngeal swab in infants, pleural exudate or bronchoalveolar lavage, these are the common samples. And for other infections, respiratory middle ear, aspirate, blood, or CSF, depending upon the infection. Uh, first is uh, you will do microscopy and sputum, you will see gram stain smear will show uh, polymorphonuclear nucleocytes and with intra and extracellular gram positive diplococci, gram positive diplococci. And at the same time, you can also perform serotyping by coiling reaction. This is a gram staining slide showing uh, pneumococcus in pairs. Uh, capsule is not visible here, but at some places you can make it out. For example, here there is a halo that is a capsule of pneumococcus. So what we do, take a sample, culture it on blood agar, the microscopy and incubate uh, with the 5 to 10% CO2 and colonies comes in 24 hours, alpha hemolytic colonies on blood agar. Animal inoculation is not done routinely. And for identification, you can do optochain sensitivity, biosolubility test, this is optochain sensitivity and this is biosolubility. You take streptococcus, add some bile into the culture and because of the uh, cell lysis, the culture becomes clear, clear. Antigen detection is done by uh, uh, ELISA or different kits. 
latex sublimination, ELISA, or counter immunoelectrophoresis. Prophylaxis uh, for um, prophylaxis of pneumococcus vaccines are available. One is polyvalent polycyclic vaccine, which includes the 23 most prevalent serotypes. Uh, it is only a pro polysaccharide vaccine. It is it has 80 to 90 percent protection. It is given to adult people, and it is not given to children below two years. Are uh, given to six, more than 65 years of age, or two to 65 years with chronic illness, alcoholism, liver disease, with functional or anatomical ischemia. If a person has undergone splenectomy or there is environmental risk factor or immunocompromised patient, HIV, lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease, all these people are a um, target for receiving the pneumococcal vaccine. Another vaccine is the conjugate vaccine. Conjugate vaccine, it includes seven pneumococcal antigen with diphtheria toxin as a carrier. It increases the immunogenicity because pneumococcal uh, polysaccharide is less immunogenic, so we combine it with diphtheria toxin protein called CRM197 and seven strain of pneumococcus polysaccharide are included in this. It gives 80% uh, protection from the pneumococcus. And now there is coming another PCV pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, which includes 13 strains. Instead of seven, it includes 13 strains, one, two, four, five, six, six, P, seven. So there are two types of vaccine, uh, polyvalent polysaccharide vaccine and a conjugate vaccine, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. Treatment, um, parenteral penicillin in serious cases or amoxicillin in milder cases. They are resistant to third generation cephalosporin or for highly resistant cases, we can use vancomycin, but most of the time it responds well to penicillin. penicillin. The another organism is Haemophilus influenzae. We talked about this in our upper respiratory tract infection. What does it cause uh, in upper respiratory tract? Haemophilus influenzae, a very serious condition, which is a medical emergency caused by Haemophilus influenzae. Anyone? Yes, Vishwar Rakesh is saying epiglottitis, epiglottitis. It is a very important cause of epiglottitis in upper respiratory tract. So it is, uh, its pathogenesis is similar to pneumococcus. Uh, uncapsulated strains do not cause pneumonia. Capsulated strains cause pneumonia. It also secretes IgA proteases just like pneumococcus. It is oxidase positive, gram negative organism gram-negative, non-motile, non-sporing bacteria. It requires factor X and V. Uh, I will just go fast over this because we already discussed in upper respiratory tract. Um, there are many species, influenzae, Egypticus, Tukri, Hemolyticus, and Parahemolyticus, H. influenzae, and that causes most, that is most pathogenic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Antigenic structure, there are major surface antigen capsular polysaccharide and outer membrane protein. And on the basis of COPS, H influenza is divided in six types, A, B, C, D, E, F. Out of this, B, is, uh, B has unique chemical structure and most pathogenic against which we give an, uh, vaccine, uh, HIP, PRP, uh, hemophilus influenza, B, PRP vaccine. Uh, okay. So prophylaxis for hemophilus is uh, given with HIV, hemophilus influenzae B, uh, polyribosyl ribitol phosphate. It is immunogenic in older children and adults, poorly immunogenic in children younger than two years because it is a polysaccharide vaccine, just like pneumococcus. They are uh, poorly immunogenic in younger uh, children, so they are not given below two years. It is also conjugated with diphtheria toxin or tetanus toxin. Another organism is Morexella catarralis. It is a gram-negative diplococci, and the cases are increasing, particularly in developed countries where uh, immunization against pneumococcus and immune H influenzae is very high. 
so these organisms cause infection in developed countries more and they cause, cause acute exacerbation of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease staphylococcus aureus is also an important cause of bacterial pneumonia particularly followed by viral infection it is associated with lung abscesses and empyema iv drug abusers are at high risk and it is important cause of nosocomial pneumonia and it also causes infant pneumonia and in infant pneumonia uh, there are some cavitary lesions in staphylococcal infection they are called nematocele they are visible in x-ray called nematocele nematocele klebsiella pneumonia is another important bacterial cause of tickle pneumonia it is most common gram negative bacteria involved to cause pneumonia and pneumonia occurs mainly in debilitated or malnourished people chronic alcoholics and there is thick gelatinous sputum in klebsiella pneumonia there is thick gelatinous sputum that is because of abundant capsular polysaccharide uh, laboratory diagnosis of klebsiella infection the sample collection uh, all that will remain same but on uh, on culture the colonies are lactose fermenting non motile organism capsulated on gram staining you will see short plump straight capsulated gram negative bacilli on culture large dome shaped mucoid sticky pink color lactose fermenting colonies identification is by indole test citrate test urea test indole negative citrate is positive urea is positive and on tsi it gives a by a reaction with a lot of gas production colonies are mucoid because of the capsule they are large mucoid sticky pink color colonies because it's a lactose fermenting organ treatment of klebsiella infection is very challenging because it is one of the organisms that cause that have very high antibiotic resistance and so treatment options are carbapenem amikacin piprasin tazobactam depending upon the sensitivity of the organism pseudomonas aeruginosa it is a common infection in hospitals Mm. and in patient with cystic fibrosis and it is common in neutropenic patients it's associated with extra pulmonary spread through septicemia other rare causes of bacterial pneumonia new pulmonary anthrax caused by bacillus anthracis it is a zoonotic disease it is uh, common in people who handle animals animals uh, it is also known as wool sorter's disease wool sorter's disease it occurs in people who sort the wool sheep wool uh, because it contains the spore of the bacilli and it is disease is because of the inhalation of spore and this is also a one of a uh, important bioterrorism uh, agent another rare cause of pneumonia is pulmonary plague sorry for the spelling uh, this is plague uh, plague is three types bubonic plague pneumonic plague or septicemic plague pneumonic plague which is which uh, counts only for 1% of the all plague cases it can cause pneumonia it is transmitted by rat and fleas so that was about uh, typical pneumonia or lober pneumonia uh, the common organisms are uh, pneumococcus h influenzae morexella klebsiella and when i say klebsiella the most important cause is most common cause among gnr is klebsiella but other